Hepiniz hoş geldiniz. Maruf kapsamında doktora çarşısı kendi içerisinde markalaşmış bir oturum. Bildiğiniz üzere 2019'dan beri e, her Maruf'ta düzenlediğimiz özel bir oturumumuz oldu. Doktora çarşısında doktora yapan araştırmacılarımızın tezlerini sunduğu, bizlerle çözümlerini paylaştığı bir oturum. E, bu oturumda asla 3 dakika içerisinde bir doktora tezinin değerini biçmek değil niyetimiz. Ee, bir doktora tezinden alınabilecek ilhamları almaya çalışıyoruz. Dolayısıyla bu oturumunda e, araştırmacılarımıza aslında motivasyon olmasını temenni ediyoruz. E, bu oturumumuzda jürilerimiz çok kıymetli. E, Araştırmacı arkadaşlarımıza yürekten başarılar diliyorum. Ee, karşılarında olmak onlar için de bir onur olacaktır. Ee, bu heyecanı paylaştığım için ben de mutluluk duyuyorum. Ee, şimdi e, süreci biraz aktarmaya çalışayım sizlere. Ee, doktora çağrısına başvuran araştırmacılarımız öncesinde hakem heyeti olarak, olarak belirlediğimiz akademisyen hocalarımız tarafından bir ön elemeden geçirildi. Hepsi kör okuma dediğimiz isimlerini görmeden e, tezlerin e, içeriğini okuyarak jürimize çıkacak tezleri belirlediler. E, şimdisin, şimdi de e, jürimiz karşısında 3 dakikalık sunum e, İngilizce olarak yapmaları gerekmekte. E, süreyi tekrar hatırlatmak isterim kendilerine. 3 dakika e, önemli bir kriterimiz. E, süreyi aşmaları halinde diskalifiye olma e, durumları olacak maalesef. E, bunu belirterek e, araştırmacılarımızı alfabetik sırayla sizlerin huzurunuza davet edeceğim. E, öncelikle Hacettepe Üniversitesi'nden Aygün Karlı karşınızda olacak. Tezinin başlığı Marine Environmental Policy and Climate Crisis, Comparative Analysis of Turkey, European Union and United States of America. Hoş geldiniz. E, sunum için ben e, bekleyeceğim sizi birazcık. Sunumu açabilir miyiz? Pointer almam lazım. Yok bende olacak. Söz sizde. Uh, hello everyone. I, uh, I'm Aygün Karlı. Uh, my PhD thesis is Marine Environmental Policy and Climate Crisis Comparative Analysis of Turkey, European Union and the United States of America. Uh, my thesis is about uh, is related to Marlboro Urban Forum because of marine governance and ocean governance and uh, uh, city planning and obviously uh, coastal planning. So uh, my PhD thesis uh, are have uh, three stages. Uh, first uh, is theoretical part. Uh, theoretical parts part has. Uh, have two dimension. The first dimension, I examine uh, marine environmental policy in the basis of climate crisis, and I suggest that uh, no climate crisis policy or no climate policy is going to be successful without marine environmental policy. So I uh, extract some. Uh, uh, some observations about climate crisis and marine environmental policy. So uh, there are some visualism about that. Uh, my second dimension is uh, comparative public policy analysis, and uh, it's about it's it has uh, United States of America and European Union. Uh, so. I examine the United States, you know, uh, America, and European Union as a public policy, as a uh, true and successful public policy examples. So, uh, as a blue economy indicators. So, result, uh, I compare uh, them to uh, extract some data from Turkey. Uh, and last dimension, last stage about my thesis. Uh, is Turkey. I would like to 
uh, examine and research about Turkey's marine environment policy and climate crisis policy. So after that, I do some semi-structure reviews, uh, review from uh, public institutions, public sector, uh, non-governmental organization, and etc. So I gain some data, then I eventually the conclusion part uh, I come. So in the conclusion part, uh, I contribute to Turkish public administration authorities to development plan or action plan to do this. So that is it. Thank you very much. And I'm so sorry about my excitement. Arkadaşlara verebilirsiniz. Çok teşekkür ediyoruz Aygün Bey'e. Böyle bir jürinin karşısında sunum yapmak elbette ki heyecanlı olacaktır. Dolayısıyla ben bütün katılımcı arkadaşlarımız için bir alkış rica ediyorum. Doktora takdir edersiniz ki yılların bir emeği ve sadece yazılı bir belge değil. Yıllarca süren bu çalışmanın topluma birer katkısı olmasını bekliyoruz. Nitekim bu oturumdaki her bir tezin şehre dair farklı problemlere birer çözüm oluşturacağı inancındayız. Sıradaki sunumumuzu Kadir Has Üniversitesi'nden Büşra Eser yapacak. Tezinin başlığı Falafel and Humus Restaurants in Istanbul, Possibility of Cosmopolitan Canopy. Sahne size. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Bishra and my research is about migrant entrepreneurship and non-national restaurants in Istanbul. Since 2013, uh, we, see, we witnessed some significant, significant changes in the Istanbul urban landscape and there has been a substantial increase in uh, migrant entrepreneurship leading to diverse restaurants from Iran, Pakistan, Syria, Lebanon, Thailand and Indonesia. And I will focus on the restaurant from the Arab world or more specifically the Levant region and I will call them as hummus and falafel restaurants in, my, uh, in the context of my research. Why? First, it is because these are the most famous dishes of the region and spread to many parts of the world through commerce, migration, entrepreneurship and national branding. Second, in Istanbul, these restaurants serve a uh, great, serve a rich spectrum where uh, the owners, customers, uh, restaurant styles are diverse. Thanks to this great diversity, I can be after a cosmopolitan canopy. Uh, I can, you can, in the middle of the poster, you can see one of the exemplary matches start uh, representing how I deal with these diversities. Uh, the number of these matrix start will be increased and they will be focused on the neighborhood, the neighborhood types, the customer type, uh, marketing strategy uh, and restaurant team. Uh, thanks to these great diversities, I can uh, be after a cosmopolitan canopy. Uh, it is important because in Istanbul we see Syrian restaurants, uh, falafel or hummus uh, parlors, vegan cafes uh, and Lebanese bistros that, that differentiate from each other in terms of uh, social construction and production of space and place. So I can uh, observe the different imaginaries and the hierarchy of taste in the restaurants. Uh, so how all these relate to cosmopolitan canopy? Under the cosmopolitan canopy, diverse people get together, come together and uh, they practice getting alone. Uh, Elijah Anderson introduced the term and I will use it in my research to observe the customer side diverse, do they encounter each other, do they develop social bonds, and if not, how they can achieve this task. I will use qualitative techniques based on uh, observation and interviews uh, on restaurants, digital and uh, physical uh, spaces. I want my study not only contribute to the academic literature, but also pave the way for new social policies, uh, for reducing racism and enhancing migrant social cohesion. You can see some of these aims uh, in the upper right of the poster. Uh, they will be focused on uh, as I said, reducing racism, uh, how, do we, how can we deal with the concept of eating the other, how we use space and place, and thank you for listening. <laughs> okay. 
Burada e, timer var. Süreyi açtıkları anda tekrar bir uyarı gireceğim başkanım. Eğer açmıyorsalar ben müdahale etmiyorum. Süreyi aşarlarsa ben arada zaten tekrar bir uyarı geçiyorum. Sıradaki tezimiz Güzide Miray Perihanoğlu'ndan gelecek. Kendisi İstanbul Teknik Üniversitesi'nde okumakta. Investigation of Current and Post Earthquake Signal Pad Loss Conditions of Base Stations with Special and Machine Learning Methods and Application Development. Çağımızın temel problemlerinden birine burada parmak basacak. Buyurun. Do you know that there are at least 20,000 earthquakes every year in our country and that 20 destructive earthquakes uh, above 7 uh, have occurred since 1900. The, after these earthquakes, many buildings collapsed, thousands of people died, uh, energy and communication infrastructure was damaged and significant economic losses occurred. As an example, it is state that there were two trillion Turkish dollars in economic losses in Mara earthquake and approximately three of million of these uh, structure three of million this damage or was related to communication structure the continuity and resilience of communication structures vitally important issue in disaster and emergency management after the earthquakes in Turkey there were long interruptions uh, in the mobile network network systems. For this, uh, for the reasons of these are one damage to electrical infrastructure, two damage to base stations and base stations on buildings, and three intensive use. For, uh, for this reason, our study will contribute to the literature to determine structural conditions of base stations for mobile communication systems and uh, to investigate signal path losses areas after the earthquake. My thesis study plans how to provide the communication systems before, during, and after the earthquakes expected in Istanbul. The study consists of four stages. First stage is pre-earthquake in signal path losses areas, coverage analysis. Second stage is about risk analysis of base stations. And third stage is about determining the uh, coverage gaps after the signal coverage gaps after the uh, earthquake. And fourth stage is about determining the suitable to locations of base stations. The, as a result of my study, uh, risky base stations and signal path losses areas will be identified. And as a solution, uh, as a solution, priority base stations on buildings for urban transformation and uh, signal suitable location for tr base stations will be identified. Uh, it will contribute to uh, response and recovery effects. As I conclude my words, I would like to thank you everyone. Çok teşekkür ediyoruz. E, yapılan bu sunumlar tam bir tam bir e, elevator speech mahiyetinde e, bir asansör yolculuğu süresince derdimizi anlatmak mecburiyetindeyiz. Üç dakikada bu şekilde e, tezlerimizin en vurucu yanlarını e, sizlerle paylaşmaya çalışıyoruz. E, sıradaki tezimiz e, Gebze Teknik Üniversitesi'nden Mer Meltem Yağcıoğlu'ndan gelecek. Application of QL2K model with e, different scenarios for water quality management in Dilderesi drainage area. What is the environmental pressures? Um, we can define this as two titles, uh, controlled and uncontrolled pressures. Examples of uncontrolled pressures are uh, fluids, uh, such as uh, fluids due to excessive rainfall, um, discharges, uh, sudden discharges, uh, and um, 
natural disasters uh, such as earthquakes uh, and um, controlled pressures uh, are um, controlled pressures are um, natural areas, agricultural areas, uh, animal farms, uh, and quarries. Uh, these pressures um, adversely uh, impact uh, to receiving environments and water resources. Deal that is uh, a drainage area is under intense uh, influence of these pressures. Uh, you can see the Dilderis Basin on the maps. Uh, for the years 2000 and uh, 2018, uh, agricultural areas, industrial areas, and residential areas are colored. Uh, purple color indicates industrial areas, um, red colors uh, indicates residential areas, and uh, yellow uh, and green uh, colors in the case, agricultural areas. And you can see uh, how much the rate of urbanization and industrialization has increased. Um, well, uh, what, uh, what happens if these pressures uh, continue? Uh, this is exactly my aim in this thesis, uh, to predict uh, what might happen. Um, for this purpose, uh, QR2K uh, is one of the uh, water quality models uh, will be used. With the model, um, the physical and the uh, hydrological characteristics of Dilderesse uh, will be defined, and the uh, various uh, physical chemical parameters will be analyzed. And uh, lastly, we, uh, we can def um, Lastly, we can uh, predict uh, the, uh, its um, uh, near future um, uh, with uh, using QR key uh, with uh, simulation. Uh, um, sorry, uh, we can simulation. Thank you. sunumunuz için teşekkür ederiz. Ee, her bir alanın farklı problemleri olsa da ortak dertlerde bazen birleşiyoruz. Tezlerimizin her biri farklı sahalarda çalışmışlar. Ancak bu e, sahalarda üretilen çözümlerin hepimize e, birer ilham olarak yeni projeler üretilmesini ümit ediyorum. E, yeni tezimizi Yıldız Teknik Üniversitesi'nden Merve Güroğlu Ağdaş sunacak. Tezimizin başlığı Rethinking the concept of livable city within the framework of social sustainability and evaluation in the case of Lüleburgaz city. What do you see in the photo? A smiling woman. But if you look at carefully, you can see each piece has different characteristics, just like cities. Most of us live in cities, and it is stated that population growth will be in mid-sized cities, especially in developing countries. So, but uh, and we don't know uh, how to achieve livable, livable, livable city is not defined, definitely defined clearly. And uh, we know that uh, unbalanced growth of cities cause global problems, decrease life quality, and uh, a change rural urban uh, relations. Uh, and uh, and it's a problem uh, to solve these problems. Uh, so. Uh, how to achieve livable city is a problem. Uh, therefore, but we know that the global consequences of sustainability are rooted in local origins. So how uh, agricultural lands, uh, vegetation, uh, social structure affected from urbanization and which sustainable development goals should be adopted at first city 
uh, by local governments, it is necessary to solve these problems because of the uh, basic needs such as uh, shelter and uh, shelter and food are local and a suitable solution uh, for one may not be suitable for another. In this respect, uh, it is necessary to consider to, live, uh, to achieve livability, uh, consider size, morphological and geographical characteristics of cities. In this line, the, uh, the aim of the thesis is twofold. The first is to uh, describe livability, uh, comprehensive describe livability, a uh, macro and micro level to achieve uh, livability, and and the second is by using social sustainability. And the second is to uh, make livable city practice make make livable city uh, practice by using this method. For this purpose, two scale were examined in medium-sized cities. Uh, it, it, it wanted to investigate uh, urban growth effect on land use and land cover change uh, by using remote sensing uh, in, at city level uh, based on sustainable development goals and uh, Maslow hierarchy of needs. Uh, and uh, at the neighborhood scale, uh, it is investigated uh, uh, special livability parameters such as uh, such as image uh, accessibility uh, density and social sustainable social sustainable sustainability parameters such as uh, participation uh, sense of community house house satisfaction are were investigated by using structural equation model now imagine if the all pieces uh, colored the different uh, same color can we see the Smiling woman? No. We believe that uh, a shape living city uh, uh, balance urban and uh, rural balance. Thank you. Teşekkür ediyoruz. Uh, Maruf ekibinden birisi olarak şu an sizleri burada görmekten uh, ekstra mutluyuz. Uh, Paralelde birçok fazla oturumumuz varken bu oturumu tercih ettiğiniz için tekrar teşekkür ediyorum. Ee, burada diğer oturumlara nazaran biraz daha yarışma e, konseptiyle eğlenerek öğrenmek istiyoruz. Ee, sıradaki tezimizi Orta Doğu Teknik Üniversitesi'nden Müzeyyen Sağroğlu yapacak. Ee, tezimizin başlığı The Capabilities Approach to the Quality of Urban Life of Women Living in Urban Neighborhoods. Measuring the intra-urban uh, disparities in the city of Amasya. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, if we put aside the women issues first and try to think theoretically, I want to ask a question first. While quality of life studies are dominated by such a utilitarian and hedonist perspectives, how can we include human rights into the quality of urban life literature? Are we going to continue to analyze quality of life and quality of urban life only from a utilitarian approach? I expect not. There is a signal, a change needed. Thanks to Nobel laureates Amartya Sen and Marta Nussbaum, they filled the philosophical foundation of well-being studies with Aristotelian ethics. But there's a literature gap in urban studies. I try to trace this gap and I try to fill it. In my thesis, I dream an urban environment that everyone has the right to live their life with dignity in a place where they have freedom to achieve the functionings they value. My thesis proposes the idea that the urban environment that provides people to achieve the functioning they value are the places with high quality of urban life. But what about women in particular? Unlike men, women face compelling challenges in urban life and experience the city through a set of barriers that shaping their daily life in gendered ways. So in theory, my thesis proposes to holistically, introdu holistically introduce the concepts of the quality of urban life, the urban and women relation, and also the capabilities and functionings approach into the urban agenda. In practice, my thesis 
tries to reveal whether or to what extent the internal and external conversion factors are influential to constrain women's capabilities in reaching their functionings on the issues of accessibility, safety, and participation in the urban neighborhoods of Amasya. I'm using ArcGIS, SPSS, and Smart PLS programs for the analysis. So to expand the women's agency freedom in cities, I believe the obtained results will be important for the development of women's capabilities and also the development of future urban policies. Thank you. Teşekkür ediyoruz. Ee, sıradaki tezimiz biraz uzaklardan geldi. Özge Öğüt Hanım, e, Politecnico di Milano Üniversitesi'nden e, aramıza katıldı. Tezimizin başlığı, Multidimensional Examination of Vertical Green Structures in Changing Urban Environment. Let's take a few seconds to imagine a green city, breathing city, with vegetation not only on the ground floor level, but also vertically climbing. But wait a second, why? Why we need to do something against to the nature? It's uh, quite significant to answer because our cities are growing very fast and we don't have enough spaces to build more, to design more green parks and gardens and so on. Therefore, we need an adaptable solution to increase the green amount, in the, especially in the compact built urban areas. So vertical green um, offers this possibility as one of the nature-based solutions, and it gives the possibility to increase the green amount in the cities. And uh, besides, uh, despite all the long list of the benefits, potential benefits that we can drive, we also have a long list of the issues that we have to uh, solve. So in my thesis, um, I aim to cover some of these gaps, uh, e these existing gaps, to minimize the existing challenges and optimize the potential benefits as much as possible. So during the uh, review process, I listed all the parameters based on the PESTAL framework, which are political, economical, social, technological, environmental, and legal. And my flow chart starts from the technological uh, aspects, where I study the component selection for design, for maintenance, and for construction as well. So from technological point of view, uh, regarding the non-living materials, such as um, supporting system, structural system, I use life cycle assessment. But on the other hand, for the vegetation, I am using uh, some laboratory experiments to uh, specifically one climate chamber to simulate different uh, climate conditions and infrared thermography to develop a novel index to measure uh, the climatic stress on the vegetation. From an environmental point of view, thanks to this uh, methodology, we are able to assess the urban heat island impacts, global warming uh, reduced impacts, where I use a case study in Milan, and I am using uh, in two measurements for one year, and I, show that, uh, I saw that the vertical green has a significant cooling impact, especially in the summer and the autumn. So, Legal, social, economic, and all the other uh, aspects are always there, thanks to their multi-cross-cutting uh, uh, cross roles. So to sum up, uh, I believe that the multidisciplinary is the key for uh, achieving resilience, starting from the one single leaf scale up to the built environment where we live in. Thank you very much. Bugün burada izlediğimiz sunumlar yarının çığır açan çalışmalarından biri olabilir. Sıradaki sunumumuz Özyeğin Üniversitesi'nden Pelin Günay'dan gelecek. Tezimizin başlığı Design of Urban Seeds as Triangulation Elements in Encouraging Citizens Towards Social Interaction. Uh, 
Um, hello all, first of all, thank you for your time. Uh, my um, initial interest in my PhD topic started with a question about how can we actually design spaces, design products that can encourage people to interact with each other in an urban space. Um, during my first initial inter literature review, I came across a term called triangulation. Uh, triangulation is defined uh, by William White back in the 70s as an external stimulus which acts as a, a passage point between at least two actors. So it acts as a, a com com it combines two people through a stimulus. So based on this, I went back and collected a different, different various uh, social interact various products, uh, examples that portrayed social interaction dynamics, and I collected this corpus. Then reflecting back on these corpus, this uh, pool of examples, I came across uh, my f initial observation uh, within this corpus. I realized that body and movement was observed within the examples uh, more. Which examples? Uh, the ones that actually portrays co-use and co-experiencing scenarios. So this initial uh, pool of examples uh, reflected that the examples which portray co-use has more uh, involves more body and movement within them. So based on this, I went back and with my background in product design, I went back and collected uh, another uh, pool of examples. Uh, this time focusing on the seating elements and uh, sitting acts uh, within the urban spaces. And a thorough analysis of uh, these urban seats, as you can see with these two different examples, it portrays uh, different dimensions uh, of autonomy, dependency and uh, attention. And also reflecting back to this uh, design space of the examples, I realized that uh, triangulation actually has different phases of uh, dynamics. It initially started with an individual uh, engagement with the bench, and then it moves towards, the towards a collective one. Uh, but how does this move towards a collective one? That's now my interest and the contribution to the field. So I'll be looking at uh, through a field observation and uh, hopefully um, either by developing a prototype or hacking an existing bench, I'll be looking how these dimensions, autonomy, dependency, and attention are portrayed in different phases of, uh, in different phases of triangulation. And uh, my aim is to do this with the observation and semi-structured interviews uh, with those who are willing to do so in the field uh, so thank you for your time and listening. Sunumunuz için teşekkür ediyoruz. Az önce aldığım kötü bir haberle biraz motivasyonum düştü. Ancak Serim Hanım buraya gelirken yolda bir trafik kazası geçirmiş. Şu an kendisi hastanede kendisine acil şifalar diliyoruz. Ee, jürimizden de e, bir aksilik olmaması adına adalette e, puanlamada sadece sıfır vermesini rica edeceğim. Bir sonraki tezimiz e, Süleyman Adahi Şahin'den gelecek. Sakarya Uygulamalı Bilimler Üniversitesi'nden. Tezimizin başlığı A Systematic Approach to Assessing in the Integration of Entry Points into Cities with Public Transport, Determination of Public Transport Integration Score. Hello everybody, my name is Adahi uh, and being here is really nice. And also, the topic is related to all of us. I'm seeing everybody from abroad or another city coming here with some airplanes or trains or buses, right? And while coming to here, you use these devices to come this place, Istanbul Congress Center. And while using these public transport uh, vehicles, you are not aware of anything, maybe. You just open your phone and uh, look at the Google Maps to get directions, or you just come to the train stations and look to the, some information systems, right? But not every city like Istanbul. For example, let's think about another city from Anatolia, like Yozgat. That has a train station or bus, bus stations? No, intercity bus stations. But these, these places are like stations or air, air, air, uh, airports are the entry points of the cities, and we need to engage these entry points 
with the public transport system in the cities. Why? Because we are talking about uh, the sustainable urban transport system. And of course, the walking or cycling or e-scooters are important, but the public transport is also important. Why? Because we need to decrease the using of cars, right? To assess this public transportation integration, we decided to create a systematic approach while using some taking experts' visions or experts' reviews and also uh, evaluating the uh, users' perceptions. And while getting combined two of them, we decided to make a ranking system like a scorecard. And we can uh, assign a score to the city to assess this public transport integration. And maybe we can make some decisions or recommend some decisions to policymakers or some municipalities, right? And maybe with this public transport scorecard, we can uh, give some ideas to municipalities to make them their cities more sustainable in terms of public transport systems. While assessing that, of course, the governmental issues or the governance is important, but the futures is also important. Why, if you, if you provide more efficient and more available public transport system, people gonna use it, people gonna decrease the using cars. And that's why we will achieve the future with our lives and quality of lives. Thank you so much for listening. Her biri bir kendi içerisinde birbirinden değerli tezler dinledik. Son tezimizi Okan Üniversitesi'nden Zeynep Özen Aslan sunacak. Tezimizin başlığı Elderly Persons Assessment and Expectation on Local Government Health Services, The Case of Kadıköy. People are living longer in all over the world. Uh, therefore, the elderly population rate is increasing. And the topic of the old age become important. Uh, in uh, Turkey and in the world, uh, nearly elderly population is same. It is 10 percentage of the total population. Uh, I examined the age-friendly uh, cities uh, in my study. Uh, for example, at there, uh, municipalities are responsible from the uh, health services and the social services. Of, of course, government control them. For example, in Germany, um, there are special houses that young and uh, elderly come together and make activities. Uh, and also in Jap Japan, there are uh, smart robots to help elderly. Uh, and uh, streets and home designs are uh, planning with elderly. Uh, also, uh, and uh, age-friendly universities, uh, age uh, nurseries are the examples. Uh, I am doing this study uh, in Kadıköy, where has the highest uh, elderly population is. What is my objective? Uh, in fact, I want to know how they feel about the services that municipality provide, health services and the social services, and what are their expectations. Uh, what is my hypothesis, in fact? Uh, individuals have uh, different demographic characteristics, such as gender, uh, education, age, etc. And this difference, of course, uh, affects the uh, utilization rate and satisfaction level of the uh, offers that uh, municipality provide. My research is uh, understanding, it is trying to understand these differences. In my research, there's two part. Quantitative part is still going on. I made surveys with 400 people. In qualitative part, uh, I made a deep interview with uh, 15 uh, elderly, and uh, teams and calls are created from the answers. What they want? Health consultancy they want. Uh, home medical care and social care. Uh, they want to be social, uh, social places, and especially lonely ones want 
emergency button. Uh, and uh, for example, cleaning and support, supporting, uh, cleaning and shopping support. Thank you. Araştırmacılarımıza teşekkür ediyoruz. Ee, heyecan verici 10 tane tez dinledik. Şimdi bu tezleri e, jürimizin e, adil değerlendirmesine sunduk. Sonuçlarını arkadaşlarımızın e, ortalamasını alması adına biraz sizlerden e, süre müsaade isteyeceğim. E, bu tezlerin her biri e, parlak fikirler sundu. Yeni e, projeler üretebilmek için ilham kaynağı oldu. Bunları yakından tanıma fırsatı bulduk. E, unutmayalım ki bu bir e, yarışmadan öte kazanmak kadar bilgi paylaşmak için kurgulanmış bir oturumdu. Her sorun yepyeni bir bakış açısı sundu. Yepyeni sahalara dair fikirler edinmiş olduk. E, jürimiz e, bu zorlu görevi üstlenirken e, kendilerinin de bu oturuma dair fikirlerini almak isteriz. E, başkanımız müsaitseniz sizden başlayalım. E, oturma dair. Peki. <laughs> okay. Um, we need your uh, expectation about this uh, session. What do you want to say for us? Well, I, I think in, in general it's a very impressive event. Uh, it's very interesting to see these uh, enthusiastic uh, researches very uh, very innovative uh, quite uh, very much linking the academic knowledge and the research but finding real real solutions and this is very impressive it was not easy to make a distinction who is better than <laughs> yeah. the other uh, but I think the, the the overall experience is very positive Thank you very much for the organizer for this. Thank you so much. E, Nalas icra direktörü Kelment Cezazeli dinledik. E, if you are ready, <laughs> we want to listen your expectation also. Thank you very much. And I must congratulate all the presenters today uh, for doing so well in raising a wide number of issues and presenting them in a very clear way. To summarize what is three years' work, probably in three minutes is an enormous challenge and I think they've done absolutely brilliantly. So I think they all deserve a round of applause. I, I should say personally I feel a complete fraud being here because although I did a major th uh, two or three year study of housing in Ankara in the 1970s and that to produce a three volume report, I never got round to publishing it or getting a PhD with it. So many congratulations again to everyone. Thank you. Niel Hocam, sizleri de dinleyelim. Herkese merhaba. Jüri koltuğunda olmaktan çok onur duydum. Ama jüri olmasaydım da herhalde maruf kapsamında takip etmek için ajandamda ilk sıraya yazacağım etkinliklerden bir tanesiydi. Akademide nispeten genç bir hoca olarak böyle çok enerjisi yüksek, ne istediğini bilen ve doktora gibi zorlu bir sürece emek veren gençleri görmekten çok mutlu oldum. Kendi yıllarımı hatırladım. Biz akademiyayı ve doktorayı bazen başka dünyanın insanlarından oluşan işler ve kişiler zannedenler olur. Hayatın neresine ne kadar somut dokunabiliyor, çok mu teorik çerçevede kalıyor diye eleştirenler olur. Onun galiba en iyi göstergelerinden bir tanesi bugün burada yapılan sunumlardı. Hepsine çok başarılar diliyorum. Bu sembolik bir yarışma. Ödül alan olacaktır, alamayan olacaktır. Yolları açık olsun. Bir de biz hocalar genelde şunu söyleriz. En iyi tez biten tezdir. O yüzden lütfen çok da o kısır döngünün içinde kendinizi harcamayın. E, bitirdikten sonrası için akademik hayatınızda eksik kaldığını düşündüğünüz noktaları geliştirmek geliştirmek için çokça zamanınız olacak. Ee, teşekkür ediyorum hepinize. Uh, thank you very much. Congratulations. Uh, as an academician, I learned that uh, if you have a clear idea, you can express your clear idea in three minutes. So uh, it's something that I didn't think that was possible. Um, I, my message is related to the fact that probably the solutions are not so relevant 
for a PhD thesis, what is relevant is to try to define inside our PhD thesis which are the conditions for the implementation of this solution. Because we know that uh, from an academic point of view, all it seems possible, but the reality is uh, very, very hard and strong. So build also the possible transformation of your solution so that you can convince the political power and decision maker and the, the people that could finance your project that, that it's possible to also to implement your solution. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I think like you, I was thinking that this was, an, uh, this was a mission impossible <laughs> to, to for, for both of us actually, for the presenters to present their research in uh, three minutes and then listening and making a decision and scoring for us in, uh, yes. in less than three minutes really <laughs> after listening to all of them. Uh, but I stand corrected. I think this was a fantastic experience and I also want to congratulate all the presenters. Um, and also I just want to add a comment. What I loved about this session was that each and every single presenter was so excited, so enthusiastic about their work. Uh, I felt that they love what they're doing and they're enjoying what they're doing. And I think that is the secret of a successful PhD. Uh, so wishing them all success. I'm very glad to have experienced this. Thank you. Thank you all for your presentations. I think I'm in a position that I can easily understand because I was the receiver two years ago, this award. And I know that it's really, really difficult to present it in two minutes because it's like your baby and you're the proud parents here and you want to talk about it endlessly. I can understand that one, but most of uh, uh, the presenters did a great job and I was amazed by the diversity of the topics, especially looking from diverse perspectives and seeing social dimension in it was amazing and thank you for that. So I'm not going to repeat all the praises that you got, uh, but I would like to bring out the interesting fact that spatial research has so many potentials as you demonstrated. There's mode one knowledge, mode two knowledge, there's designerly research in here, there's research by design, practice-based research, analytical research. And I would like to um, remind everyone that actually PhD is about knowledge. So while pitching your PhD, please uh, next time try to bring about what is your knowledge contribution. So in some of the presentations this was very clear, in some other presentations it was not. So if you're going to make an analysis, how do you go beyond that analysis and how do you contribute to the existing literature? But in, I must say in many of the studies, this was impressive and it was there and I got, gave very high uh, marks, so congratulations again. Evet, ben de e, iki konuda duyduğum memnuniyeti e, ifade ederek başlamak istiyorum. Birincisi Marmara Belediyeler Birliği'nin böyle bir e, organizasyon e, organize ettikleri için beni davet ettikleri için. İkinci memnuniyetim ise orada değil de burada olduğumdan dolayı. Çünkü gerçekten orada olmak, burada olmaktan daha zor. En az dört ya da beş yıl ya da işte bu kadar yoğun yılların emeğini üç dakikada anlatmak çok kolay bir şey değil. E, bütün adayları kutluyorum. E, burada anlattıklarınızın çok daha fazlası test çalışmalarınızda olduğuna inanıyorum. Ama benim için gerçekten çok e, şahane bir e, deneyimdi. E, adaylara tebrik ediyorum ve başarılar diliyorum ileriki kariyerleri için. Teşekkür ediyoruz. Ben son muyum? Sonum galiba öyle mi? Benden sonra bitti mi? Ee, öncelikle çok teşekkür ediyorum. Bu güzel e, ziyafete ortak olmam, buna, burada bulunmamdan ötürü son derece mutluyum. Esasında senin söyleyeceklerini söyleyecektim. Sen benden... <gülüyor> evet, aynısını söyledik. Tüm arkadaşlarımı kutluyorum. Biz de buralardan geçtik. E, hepsine dört dörtlük dersek zaten işin değeri kalmaz. 
doktora var, sonra sonra sonra akademik çalışmalar var. Hayatın akışı içerisinde hayatın kendisi var. Doğal gelişmeler, bilimsel gelişmeler, küreselleşen dünyada nelerin olacağını kestirmek için yapılacak deneyler, onların sonuçları hepimizi etkileyecektir. Bir doğal olaylar bizi etkileyecek, bir de bilimsel gelişmeler bizi etkileyecektir. Dolayısıyla doktora ve daha sonra doçentliğini, profesörlüğünü almaya çalışacak olan arkadaşlarımız daha değişik boyutlarda kendilerini bulacaklardır. Üç dakikada burada eğer bu performansı gösteriyorsalar bu arkadaşlar bir defa kendilerine inanıyorlar, kendilerine güveniyorlar, davalarına inanıyorlar. Değişik konuların bir belediye başkanı olarak ki uzun süreli bir belediye başkanı olarak değişik konulardaki doktora tezlerinin 3 dakikalık burada sunulmasından ve kendim de bir takım onlardan kendime pay çıkartmamdan dolayı hem kendi adıma mutluyum hem de arkadaşlarıma bir kez daha tebrik ediyorum, kutluyorum. Yolunuz açık olsun, çalışmaya devam. Teşekkür ediyoruz. Sonuçlar elimize ulaştı. En az araştırmacılar kadar şu an ben de heyecanlıyım. <gülüyor> Sonuçları açıklamadan önce tekrar belirtmek istiyorum ki bugün bu salondaki herkes birer kazanan, e, sunum yapan arkadaşlarımızın hepsi e, birer motivasyon kazandı. Kimileri birer ödül kazandı. Ama salondaki tüm katılımcılar olarak bizler de bilimin ışığı altında biraz dinlendik, biraz ferahladık, biraz da fikirler edindik. Hepimiz birer kazanan olduk. E, ödüllerimizi vermek üzere e, değerli jüri üyelerimizden e, buraya e, takdim etmek istediklerim olacak. E, Mansiyon ödülü sertifikasını vermek üzere e, değerli kontin Can you come here for uh, to give our honorable mention certificate to Müzeyyen Sarıoğlu. And next one, I want to invite uh, Dear Payne to give honorable, the honorable mention certificate to um, Özge Öğüt. Birincilik sertifikasını e, başkanım siz takdim ederseniz seviniriz. Güzide Miray Perihanoğlu. <gülüyor> Doğrudur. <gülüyor> Elbette ki. Hepsi birer birinci. Şimdi bütün katılımcılarımıza birer katılım sertifikası vermek istiyoruz. Aygün Karlı. <gülüyor> Buyurun. Böyle beklemenizi rica edeceğim. Büşra Eser. Böyle buyurun. Güzide Demiray Perihanoğlu. <gülüyor> Meltem Yağcıoğlu. Tebrik ederim. Merve Güroğlu Ateş.
Müzeyyen Sağıroğlu. Tebrik ederim. Özge Öğüt. Pelin Günay. Tebrik ederim. Süleyman Adahi Şahin. Ve Zeynep Özen Aslan. Tebrik ederim.